closer and faster. We're really getting closer to Flight 7, the first V2 flight. Everything is ramping up, promising many changes. More surprisingly, even before this flight took off, the next V2 prototype was revealed, featuring many notable details. Of course, to get them flying, the FAA still plays a significant role. However, SpaceX can be confident that positive changes are coming after the push from Congress. Let's find out more on today's episode of Great SpaceX. After a strong static fire test with B-14 just 20 days after Flight 6, the next steps are immediately underway. On the morning of December 10th, B-14 was lifted down from the launch pad and moved to production site Megabay. Here, its systems, including the engine, Gridfin, Chine, Chine, and more, will be checked. And then the hot staging ring will be installed. Once these steps are completed, B-14 will return to the launch site for integration testing. Meanwhile, SpaceX will conduct a static fire test with S-33 soon, probably this weekend or within the next week. Afterward, S-33 will be checked and moved to the launch site to test with B-14. The current pace is promising for the January 11th launch plan, and possibly even sooner if SpaceX aims to create a surprise. The upcoming flight has not yet received official updates, but changes are expected. S-33 will be the first V-2 prototype with notable changes to the flap and heat shield systems. The next flight's landing will likely be more challenging to demonstrate the effectiveness of these upgrades. Previously, SpaceX removed the heat shield and chose a steeper landing angle. We can expect this challenge to be elevated in the next flight. Visually, V-2 will have larger fuel tanks, with the payload door pushed higher to improve the fuel-to-mass ratio. For early missions with insignificant payloads, more fuel might serve other purposes, such as increasing engine operation or firing more engines simultaneously in space. This will be an important test for future missions. As for the payload, after Mr. Banana's debut as the first Starship passenger on the first V2 flight, we can anticipate a larger second passenger. What do you think the next payload will be? Personally? Maybe there's a Mrs. Watermelon. Who knows? Share your predictions or suggestions in the comments section down below. Another upgrade possibly not appearing in Flight 7 is the lifting point. In S-33 and later V-2s, it will move to the next payload bay instead of just below the forward flaps. This change ensures better balance for long-term use, especially since the new flap positions are not suitable for the chopstick connection. We'll see the effectiveness of this upgrade in future V-2 flights. Looking at Starbase, the upcoming mission will repeat the catch attempt from Flight 5, which was aborted in Flight 6. This mission requires careful preparation of the engine and grid fin, which SpaceX is currently working on with B-14. The communication system, both in the booster and the catching system, must also operate stably to avoid a repeat of the previous flight's issues. In general, many changes are expected in Flight 7, the first V-2 flight. Everything aims for the next full landing flight, the first with the new version, where Super Heavy will land by Mechazilla Arm and the ship will be controlled for vertical landing. This will be key to catching both stages afterward. Do you see any changes not mentioned? Please add them and discuss in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel to follow SpaceX's development journey. The excitement is palpable as we edge closer to this groundbreaking launch. Stay tuned, because SpaceX is about to redefine the future of space travel once again. While we're keeping an eye on Flight 7's progress, another V-2 prototype reveal has appeared. That is the first image of the S-35 nose cone. Like previous prototypes, S-35 has rolled into high bay to be stacked onto the payload section before being taken to Mega Bay to Mega Bay 2 for full stacking. In fact, the image of the S-35 has been taken before, but at that time, it was just a shadow inside the Star Factory. The latest image, taken very close up, reveals many interesting details. Overall, it retains the same characteristics as the two previous V-2 versions, with changes to the flap and heat shield. This time, however, SpaceX seems to have completed everything. Unlike the S-33 nose cone, which was unfinished when it first appeared, first appeared. At a closer angle, we can see that the edges of the flap have been installed very evenly, especially the edge closest to the ship's fine joining point. Unlike V-1, the flap is now fully covered by tiles, ensuring its safety during flight. 
Furthermore, with the improvement in the jointing system, the flap is almost merged with the ship, minimizing the impact of re-entry on the sensitive jointing point, which was severely damaged in Flight 4. That's just a brief view of the S-35, because only part of the image is shown. There are probably many more interesting changes, and we need to wait until it is shown more clearly to know. With S-33, it took 42 days from the appearance of the first part until it completed the stack. With the nose cone's appearance on December 10th, we can expect the entire S-35 prototype to appear at the end of January. According to the plan, S-35 will be used in Flight 9 to combine with the B-16. Flight 7 is set to land the ship in the ocean. We all expect Flight 8 to be a ship catch, but that depends on the results of Flight 7. Meanwhile, I think Flight 9 will definitely be a ship catch mission. This shows the prominent position of S-35. Its preparations will have to be extremely careful to ensure a successful mission that helps SpaceX reach full reusability. Currently, B-16 parts are almost fully gathered, so it is probably stacked inside the Mega Bay. With the progress of the two hardware, the flights are coming continuously. This further strengthens the goal of 25 flights next year. The upcoming missions are truly exciting, and with continuous progress in both hardware and testing, SpaceX is showing its commitment to pushing the boundaries of space travel. As we keep our eyes on the developments, each step brings us closer to a future where space missions are more frequent and reliable. This relentless pursuit of improvement and innovation is what makes SpaceX's journey so thrilling to follow. But when it comes to single or long-term launch plans, we definitely have to mention the FAA. In November, the agency announced the plan to establish the Space-Related Aerospace Rulemaking Committee, or SPARC, to review and reform the launch and re-entry approval process. However, specific actions have yet to be taken. Members of Congress are pushing for changes to streamline and expedite the FAA's process. On December 6th, Representative Sam Graves, chair of the House Transportation Committee, and Representative Rob Whitman sent a letter to FAA Administrator Michael Whitaker. They cited the urgent needs of the U.S. aerospace industry and the growth of the commercial sector. They called for the FAA to pursue all actions short of rulemaking to accelerate the licensing process under Part 450, which has been valid since 2021. These regulations are causing significant delays and difficulties for companies, especially those with frequent launches like SpaceX. The letter emphasized, however, this time frame does not include the months and oftentimes years of pre-application review that create extensive delays for companies seeking a launch and re-entry license. These delays have a direct impact on the United States' standing in space exploration and our strategic competition with a growing number of adversarial nations seeking to disrupt our space capabilities and support their own. The pre-application consultation is highlighted as a particularly time-consuming step, often taking up to 180 days without any guarantee that companies will receive a license. On December 5th, the FAA held a meeting of the new committee, their statements still aim to ensure timely licensing, public safety, and other factors, but progress appears slow. The congressman added, We, however, urge the FAA to act now and ensure that all actions short of rulemaking that can help mitigate their shortcomings of the Part 450 regulation are taken in advance of any necessary regulatory changes to ensure that the commercial space industry does not have to wait years for relief. Many others have also stressed the need for the FAA to move things forward in the coming months. Overall, Spark is set to benefit companies, as its 24 members include many representatives from major private companies. This is good news for SpaceX. In the near term, with the transition to V2, licensing remains uncertain. In the future, projects like 25 Starbase flights and 44 Florida flights will require faster approval processes. We'll see how this push impacts Starship, starting with Flight 7 and into 2025. The congressional push underscores the importance of modernizing and streamlining the regulatory framework for rapid aerospace innovation. Spark brings together experts to tackle bureaucratic hurdles, aiming for more efficient and predictable licensing procedures. This will benefit companies like SpaceX at the forefront of space exploration. As SpaceX prepares for upcoming V2 launches, the industry watches regulatory changes closely. Increased launch frequency and reduced waiting times for approvals could significantly boost SpaceX's capabilities and help maintain U.S. leadership in space. 
With 25 flights from Starbase and 44 from Florida planned, the pressure is on the FAA to deliver timely reforms. In conclusion, while challenges remain, congressional efforts and SPARC offer a promising path forward. The success of these initiatives will be crucial for the commercial space industry to thrive and innovate, paving the way for advancements in space exploration. Stay tuned as we follow these developments and their impact on SpaceX's journey to full reusability. Well, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.